meeting. Cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna call this meeting to order then at 7, 10 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we're gonna move into the approval of the agenda. Um, are there any uh, uh, amendments to the agenda? Anybody? Okay, can I get a motion? I'm just to approve the agenda for this evening. I second. Oh, okay, so we're gonna have to do down ballot, or we're gonna have to do like constitutional order voting, right? Yeah, roll call. Okay. Wait, uh, I'm sorry. I probably should have added this to the agenda, but can we talk about like um, the new funding process? Because I saw Vaughn was here. So maybe if he can like talk a little bit about the how to do the whole rec process. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think it's on, because there's a section on USAC budget and funding. Could we talk there? If you want to talk about it there. That's yeah, we could talk broad, broadly about it there. Yeah, okay. just, I don't. I, I'm like, we could, oh, could we it. also talk about the um, meeting efficiency that was going to be on the agenda last oh, meeting, yeah. but then we we're at like 2 a.m. Can yeah. we leave that until the next regular meeting? I'm pretty sure this is for coronavirus issues mostly. Right. I mean, yeah. anything I think that can be pushed next week should be pushed next week. It is still spring break. Are you okay with that, Ryan? Yeah, okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, so, are there any other amendments before I go down? the constitutional order. Okay, then IVP. Yes. Okay, EVP. EVP. Hello. John. Yes, sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay, you're good. Gen rep one. Yes. Gen rep two. Gen rep two. Orion. <laughs> sorry, yeah, the audio is a little bit bad. Um, right. Yes. Gen Rep 3? Yes. Uh, AC? Yes. Uh, CC? Yes. Okay. CSC? Yes. Uh, CAC? <clears throat> Is CAC yes? Is CAC frozen? Kalechi? It looks frozen. Okay, I'm going to move on. FAC? Yes. Okay. FSC? Yeah. SWC is not here, right? I don't think so. She's coming later. Transfer student rep? Is Isabel here? No, yeah, she's coming later. Too. Okay. And Shahama uh, yeah. International Student Rep? Yeah. Okay. By a motion of 11 to 0, or 11 to 0 to 0, the motion passes and the agenda is approved. Okay. With that, we're going to move into election up, or no, sorry, sorry, public comment. Um, okay, um, Kim, can you help me here? Um, are there members of the public that would like to speak? So we're going to have two rounds, is that correct, Kim? Like one video, one no video and just audio, and then one yeah. audio and video. So each member of the public shall have two minutes to speak. Um, one time, so you can speak either during no video audio, so where your video is turned off and you can speak through audio, or via audio and video. Um, we just ask that you're respectful and respectful of people's times, um, but you can speak about any issue that's on the agenda. So, um, Robert, first, yeah, quick, yeah. So, my apologies, quick question Are we gonna do it through the chat or are we gonna do it through the raise hat? If you click participants, you can click raise hand and you'll see who wants to do public comment. It would be easier for me if they could just say in the chat so that I could. Um, the order. The order. Yeah. So first I'm going to do, first I'm going to do no video audio. So just raise your hand for that. Uh, Delaney, I see you. So I'll just leave you for video and audio since that's the typical way. Um, so, okay. Is there anybody, um, just please like comment in the chat um, if you would like to speak for no video, only audio. Anybody? Okay, final call. Okay, if nobody would like to speak for no video, audio only, then we will move on to audio and video. So with that, um, we'll start with Delaney. Hello. Hi guys, can you hear me? 
Yeah. Yes. Okay, amazing. Um, thank you so much for, for having me. I'm just gonna pull up what I'm gonna read. Okay, um, hello council members. Thank you so much for agreeing to hear my comment tonight. My name is Delaney Ivey and I am a student, a senior student supervisor at Kirkoff Coffee House. I've been working at Kirkoff for a year and a half and I'm here to not only share my situation as a customer service worker, but to advocate for all student employees who are given a prorated paid administrative leave per UC executive order. I'll start by sharing my experiences with lost wages since the start of COVID-19. On Friday, March 13th, I submitted a lost wages intake form immediately after finding out that I had to move home for the entirety of spring quarter. I asked for the wages I would have earned, $2,145, and explained my needs in great detail. Last Thursday, I received two calls from a blocked number, which was apparently an employee following up for further details. I got a voicemail, but I have no way to reach them, and I've heard through IVP announcements that ECRT isn't picking up the phones. Today, I received an email from ASUCLA about the UC policy. Instead of the $2,000 I am losing, I was given only 33.49 hours of pay, which comes out to $552.59. This is about $6 a day during spring quarter. Keep in mind that I make most of my coworkers as a supervisor. Most ASU CLA entry level positions begin at minimum wage. My coworkers are confused by the policy and distressed knowing that we have no choice but to lose almost three quarters of our wages. There is no way to compensate for this except for more funding or more remote job opportunities. Since we work in customer service, we cannot telecommute. Kirkoff, like many UCLA facilities, is not even open, so we can't risk it and keep working. We are not full-time, so we cannot file for unemployment insurance. Finding work off campus is near impossible because of the inflexibility of our class schedules, business closures in the stay-at-home order, and the need to provide for loved ones. So to accommodate for this tremendous financial hardship student workers are facing, I encourage you to consider the following. First, during your, ad, uh, during your call with admin tomorrow, please uh, encourage them to consider prorating paid administrative leave for part-time student employees. Please encourage them to meet the specific needs that we explained on the intake form and please ask them to communicate with us in a, an accessible manner. Second, since there will be no events during spring quarter, please consider allocating some of your funding to a student worker emergency relief fund in order to compensate for part or all of our lost wages. And last, please explore the idea of encouraging admin to offer students alternative jobs at the same pay grade that they would fulfill remotely for the duration of this period. Um, from what I'm aware, UC Berkeley is currently working on this. Um, and that is all. Thank you guys so much for your time. And if you have any questions, let me know. Sweet, thank you. Um, once again, this is like the opportunity for the public to speak to council about any of the items on the agenda. Usually this is the one time during council meetings where we ask for the public to give their comment. Um, so thank you, Delaney. Um, are there any other members of the public? Just please type in the chat bar um, if you'd like to speak. Anyone else? Okay, the final call for any public comment. Oh, yes. Wait, which one is this? The so, Talia, you're there? muted. We can't hear you. Um, are you, are you want to give public comment? Just to clarify for everyone, Robert, we're not going back to public comment, right? Yeah, I mean, public comment as usual is at the beginning of every council meeting, so. Yeah, so if you wanna give public comment, now is your opportunity. Okay, cool, I just wanted to clarify. Um, so I don't have anything prepared because I just found out about this today, but um, there's been, can I be heard, yes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but I found out that UCLA or the administration is considering switching to a mandatory universal pass no record system. Um, I'm here to say that I'm here to share my personal story. Um, I am not in favor of this system because, well, for the last, for the first two years of my journey at UCLA, my grades did not reflect who I was as a person. I struggled really hard with my classes. My GPA was abysmal. Okay, the last two years, I've put in so much work to get myself to a place that where I can not only feel comfortable and confident with my grades, like. I, I was hoping, I was banking on spring quarter, boosting my GPA to a point where I not only would I 
be like a competitive applicant for grad school like I would be able to apply I know I'm rambling for a bit because I'm like very emotional about this right now but the idea that grades next quarter um, might be mandatory pass no record um, isn't just wouldn't just be detrimental to me it would completely destroy not just the work that I've been putting up to get to this this point in my life but it would completely destroy like all the work I've put in over the two years so I just and I'm getting like a little emotional but I just want to say that I really really hope that USAC does not advocate for a universal pass no record system it would completely destroy my dream it would completely destroy like the dreams that my friends have the the work that we've put into um I I, I don't want to ramble anymore but I just want to voice my opinion that I would really prefer that we have at least the option to choose a letter grade if it benefits our situation I feel like I'm getting screwed over all, like, all over again just with what happened with commencement and like the, the administration not taking my voice um, into account I feel like if they took this option away from me then like everything I've ever worked for would just be down the drain sorry that's all I have to say I think I'm, I would get too emotional if I continue thank you we appreciate it um, we appreciate you sharing your story too um, Navi everybody hear me mm -hmm. yes cool so i'll kind of take my eboard chair uh eboard chair hat off for a second and also talk about universal pass no pass um as the president of the life science student association and hearing the concerns of the members um in that organization um and you know consistent with our goal to represent life science students we are also um uh we are also in opposition of universal pass no pass we believe that um a pass no pass system is a good direction to go into but as the default but there should be an opt-in option for students to um, receive letter grades particularly because a lot of life sciences and just south campus students in general are, are aiming to go to grad school just by the virtue of the jobs that they would like um, and we don't want students to be put at a, at a um, uh, we don't want students to have what's it called can't talk right now uh, to be um, less competitive than peers from other institutions. Um, and we highly recommend that UCLA, uh, that USAC advocate um, the, the same programs and the plans that UC Berkeley has put into place in regards to, uh, in regards to pass no pass. That's all, thank you. Sweet, thank you, Navi. Um, once again, this is like a, another call for public comment. Um, this is the one time during our council meetings where we ask for public comment. So, would anybody else like to speak? Oh, um, Elsie, yes. Um, Wait, Rob, one second. Uh, can, can you guys hear me? Fernando, yeah. Yeah, this is all um, audio and video, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. okay. Thanks. Sweet. Sorry, I'll see. Um. Cool. Elsie, you you can go. Can you hear her? No, I can't. Um, I think you might be muted. Oh, hello. Kelsey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you out there? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm sorry about that. I was trying to figure out how this worked. Um, yeah. So I just wanted. Uh, can you all hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I just also wanted to share my concerns in regards to like the universal um pass no pass. Um, I think the default for that is a great option for because i do realize that many students may be at a disadvantage if they're at home and they have all these other responsibilities that they didn't have while being on campus and so i understand that aspect of it and i support that but i also recognize that students like myself and other students like that have had like the concern that they want the grades that they were counting on these grades for spring quarter to raise their GPA like this like I'm a senior my last quarter would be spring and because I had counted on spring to like really have like that last chance to boost my GPAs like I'm taking four classes so I feel like all those units would have been kind of gone to waste for me especially because I've been working so hard to get to departmental uh, honors for biology and I think that 
with all that's going on, I've already gotten like that quarter taken away from me as a senior. I'm getting, you know, like graduation and all of that. So I feel I I have like the same concerns as I, I forgot her name, but I have the same emotions as um, that she has in regards to like um, this grading system. I really don't think it would reflect me as a student, and like these um, courses, I don't think I it would really be fulfilling for me to be taking them as pass, no pass, like if I have to be forced into it. But I really do think that students should have that option to either have like pass, no pass or like grades. Um, yeah, and I think that's all I have to say. And I think um, like for me, I really hope that like all the perspectives are really taken like seriously and that USAC has like the, you know, takes into account like all of these um, concerns just because I would really be at a disadvantage if the universal pass, no pass like is implemented and I have no choice to like opt into like for grades. Yeah, so thank you <laughs> for your time. Awesome, thank you. Um, okay, any other members of the public, would you like to speak during this time about any of the items? Oh, Emily, hi, yes. Hello? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, I, hi, I'm Emily. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit briefly also about the um, um, pass, no pass options for next quarter. Um, I understand that the um, universal pass, no pass option is meant to install like, equity for all students. Um, and I think that that's a good thing. However, I feel that even with a transcript notation stating that the university would have a blanket pass, no pass for everybody. I still think that puts a lot of students who are considering um, grad school at a disadvantage to other peers that would allow them to use grades because we have no control over those other grad schools, even with such a notation. And also like, I feel like if we choose to put in the work for to try to have good grades, I think that we should have that choice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other members of the public, would you like to speak? Yes. Uh, Giselle Garcia. Yeah, hi. Hello. Um, so I just wanted to quickly comment on the universal pass, no pass. Um, I am a student worker, so I work like 40 plus hours a week and I can. Um, and I was a STEM major for two years and I'm like non anthro major. Um, and I'm the only one that supports me. I'm the only one that pays my rent. I'm the only one that pays my bills. And because of like, the coronavirus thing, like I don't have a job anymore. And because of like the whole like, like stress of it, I haven't been able to really like, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. Um, I haven't really been able to feel like focus. I, I'm sorry. I haven't been really, really able to focus on school, and I feel like it's an equitable choice. Just like take that stress off, because I already have to worry about bills. I already have to worry about finding another job. Like finals week hit hard, and I understand that everybody feels like, oh, you know, um, you want this to up your GPA, but like it doesn't really. Like it takes more than one quarter to make a significant increase in someone's GPA. And I feel like pass, no pass or universal pass, I feel like that is just really my only hope because if this, I feel like this is the best choice that really. It's 7.30. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I feel like it really helps the heavily impacted students. Like I'm low income, like I don't have anything that like I don't have the resources to help me through this pandemic you know and it's just like if I have one thing just taken care of I can worry about other things and this is just um yeah that's like <laughs> let's say that universal pass goes through right and people are worried about being very competitive to grad schools but they would understand that it's like not their fault like this is a pandemic this isn't like something that you know we're just gonna give to whoever nilly willy or whatever like this is just like this is serious like 
some people's lives are really impacted and some people have like people to take care of I'm, I'm lucky enough to not be like I'm lucky to enough to have the privilege of only taking care of myself but I understand that there are other people that have like kids or parents or like are the head of the a household or something like this isn't something that's you know like only how do I say this I feel like privileged people say that this is unfair to them and it's like really disheartening to hear because it didn't even make me want to say anything because it's like oh wow like people really don't give a shit about me you know like people don't give a shit about other people in situations that are not theirs and I feel like the fact that you guys are just doing what's best or doing what you think is the most equitable choice is really like it gives me hope gives me hope that I can graduate so yeah thank you thank you so much um Michael, uh, yeah, you you can. Um, usually we go in order, but because you joined late, we'll do public comment just generally now. Um, so go ahead. Hi, um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi, um, thank you so much for hearing me out. I just like to reiterate, um, thank you so much for setting up, you know, that channel of communication on the group me. Um, I just like to reiterate a couple of points that I made on the group me. Um, the first one being that it seems just from our conversation, and I, I know we can't base it, it's not entirely representative of the student body, but it seems that a preponderance of the students um, in the group chat, and you know, maybe we can say, you know, scale this to the entire student body, stand to suffer great harm from a universal passing record system. I don't want to, um, you know, burden you guys with my own story, but I come from a single parent household. My dad is a disabled U.S. Marine Corps veteran and um, the VA has to provide for all of our financial needs. I used to take the Metro bus for two hours a day to UCLA, I'm a commuter student. And I come, I come from one of the most under-resourced at-risk populations in Los Angeles. Uh, but I still think that, and I think the poll that um, one of the students was kind enough to set up demonstrates this, that the vast majority of students from disadvantaged socioeconomic backgrounds stand to lose from universal passing record system. And I think that if students are in a time, are suffering from either financial or medical crises at this time, um, they are in a better position to explain to graduate schools why it is that they elected to take a pass no record option instead of uh, a letter grade system. And if, if it's severe enough that uh, they consider it debilitating, then it might be in their best interest to withdraw and to take some time to recover from you know, whatever their crisis may be. And I, I know new to, no two cases of hardship are comparable. I don't want to compare, but once again, I do come from one of the most under-resourced, at-risk populations in Los Angeles County. But I still think that the pass no record system would really be detrimental to thousands of students. And I just want to finish with a question. I don't know if questions are permissible, but I was wondering how um, USAC may take into account the kind of numerical disparity between the amount of first generation, low socioeconomic background students who are saying, please do not advocate for a passing record system compared to the you know, relatively uh, numerically marginal amount of students who are in favor of a passing record system. Thank you, Michael. Um, so generally speaking, um, we don't respond to public comment during the public comment section. That being said, um, during the discussion about grading, I'm sure like inherently that conversation will come up um, it, about the question that you just asked. So I would hang tight for that to be something that's brought up um, during the discussion among council members. Um, with that, are there any other members of the public that would like to give comment for two minutes? Any other members? Yeah, Emily. Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to quickly jump in about the past no record. Um, I would like to personally say that I'm in favor of universal past, not because of myself, but because 
of students like the one who spoke earlier whose lives are incredibly impacted by this pandemic and you know as a person who wants to go to grad school of course you know thinking about what a pass looks like on our transcript is a concern but the only way to make it equitable is to have it a universally applied system in which everyone knows that UCLA mandated this pass no record on us um, and I just feel like if we are advocating for the most marginalized students at this university as USAC has been doing throughout this past week and I commend you all for your leadership um, I think that um, advocating for past no record is really important for that. Sweet. Thank you, Emily. Um, any other members of the public would like to give public comment? Hi, yes. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Hi. Um, my name is Paloma Nicholas. I'm pro universal pass. Um, I'm not quite sure what you do. You want me to explain why I'm pro universal pass, or do you just need students voicing their opinions to, I don't know, count numbers? A public comment is just a time two minutes for any member of the public to say whatever they want. So whatever you want to say, um, you don't have to give public comment, but um, you can. Oh, well, I'm pro universal pass because I'm pro equity. And I think this is the only equitable solution to ensure that everyone is on a similar standing in the next quarter. So that's what I have to say. Thank you so much for all your work. Thank you. Um, any other members of the public? Just please like if you are like type your message in the chat so we can go down the order. Okay, um, last call for public comment. Okay, if there's no more public comment, then we will conclude public comment at 7.38 p.m. Um, with that, we are going to move into um, appointments. Um, did we discuss about appointing David to, um, or did we at I forgot to add that to the agenda. Dr. Geller, is it possible for us to add that at this point um, for David for chair for FICOM? Hi. Um, it would have been preferable to have put it on the agenda. He is, if he was been the vice chair, he is the acting chair automatically until you do a formal appointment. So there's no real harm in waiting and doing it next week because he's already being treated that way if he's been the vice chair. Well, you can just wait till next week. Okay, our other council is fine with that. Yes. Sounds good. Okay, cool. Thank you, David. And uh, sorry for coming out tonight and then having to wait till next week. Um, so I'll definitely talk to you about coming in next week, probably at the start of the meeting, just to appoint you to FICOM chair. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thanks, David. Okay, with that, we are going to move into um, election updates for uh, USAC elections. Um, hi, Navi. <coughs> Hello, can everybody hear me? Yes. We love Zoom. Okay. Um, so the Executive Committee of Elections Board and I had a very, very long conversation yesterday. And we've had several conversations about how or about what elections are going to look like for the upcoming quarter. Um, we decided that we do not want to push back elections um, at all. Um, there was conversation, we had some conversation about perhaps um pushing it to the fall um and having just fall special elections um we didn't think that was a very good solution um and then we also had some conversations about pushing the elections a couple of weeks further into the quarter like weeks um like seven or eight to buy us a little bit more time um but i think it became pretty evident uh throughout the conversation that we had that week six will probably be fine um as long as we're able to regroup quickly and lay out a plan of of, of We'll lay out a solid plan of what we want to do moving forward. Um, so, 
and, and this is also, we also polled the candidates as well to see what their preferences are for when to have the elections and an overwhelming majority of them, about 75% also said that they prefer just to have it week six um, and just like kind of move, move forward as planned. Um, we're still kind of wrapping our heads around how to approach a lot of the different events that we were going to do, for example, like the candidates, one and two, debates, results, and how we're going to shift that onto a online slash virtual format that is effective. Um, so a lot of conversations will be taking place at the end of this week um, regarding how best to do that. Um, we're talking a lot about how we can shift our marketing efforts. Um, one of the things that we um, are, that one of the things that we voted on was to extend the social media calendar. So that's typically, um, you know, an action that USAC takes per the discretion of USAC last, last two weeks ago um, that they gave me and the, and the board. We decided it's probably best to extend social media campaigning by two weeks because there will be no opportunity for um, physical campaigning. Um, and this will be really the only way that candidates can actually get the word out about the candidacies, the platforms, the ideas, and the things that they stand for. Um, so that, that means that um, social media campaigning will now start on Wednesday, um, the, uh, the Wednesday after uh, the ballot presentation to council, so just the next day. I think the ballot presentation takes place on, I want to say, April 8th. I don't have the calendar in front of me, but something on lines, along those lines, I think it's week two, um, week two Tuesday is the ballot presentation, so social media campaign will start week two Wednesday. Um, other than that, we're still planning on having our um, campaign slash candidate orientation take place um, as planned on, uh, I want to say Thursday, April 1st, uh, week one Thursday, um, just over Zoom. Um, and of course, attendance is required for all candidates and designated campaign representatives for referendum. Um, so we're trying our, our basic kind of strategy is um, kind of keep everything as, as it is and just try to find alternatives and substitutes for it. Um, um, but one thing that we are kind of concerned about, one thing that we've discussed is um, uh, voter turnout. So on the plus side, we think that people are, you know, really sad, of course, about UCLA being moved or about no, no classes on, uh, no physical classes during spring quarter but we feel that there might be um, sort of a nostalgia that happens during spring quarter for UCLA um, and people might want to get involved in different UCLA things while being off campus and we actually think that this might positively impact voting um, but on the other hand then we don't have all of our traditional and norm uh, uh, traditional means for students to access information about elections um, through like physical uh, physical campaigning as well as like um, all, all, all like physical elections material um, one of our strategies um, that we were planning on um, implementing for the spring quarter um, prior to, of course, um, classes being moved online was we were working with UCLA sponsorships and uh, to get um, to get like sponsorships for every single day of voting and actually give those prizes out to students that voted. Um, we still want to do something similar to drive voter turnout, but we want to use um, electronic incentives. So things like gift cards, electronic gift cards, like $5 Amazon gift cards, $5 Uber gift cards. Um, and so the board asked me to relay to council that we would like, to, um, and I'd, I can put together a proposal, but um, if student fees aren't going to be refunded, which it doesn't seem like it's UCOP policy or that UCLA is going to be um, doing that, then we're asking for a significant increase, roughly twenty-five thousand to fifty thousand um, dollars, in the elections board budget to do electronic giveaways, um, which would basically just be gift cards. Um, I've started working with my UCLA um, IT to determine what how we would uh, how we would do this, like how we would get email addresses and such from students that voted, and we think it's possible. We just need the money to provide the incentives. Um, and we also think that the incentives will be a great, a great way to drive voter turnout. There's also other things that we are considering, um, such as like sending postcards to um, students' addresses that are in file with the university, reminding them like, hey, it's elections week. Um, but postage, if you can think about like 
50 cent, 40 cent postage for 40,000 postcards is pretty expensive, which adds up to like ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. So really at this point, we're just looking for a lot more money. Um, I'd come through the um, budget and we've got a significant chunk, but a lot of it is already committed um, and or spent, just the invoices haven't um, gone through. Um, and for once again, have to work with SJ to do that. Um, but that's kind of where we stand as of right now. Any questions? Yeah, council members, if you just like have questions, type of one in the chat so I can go in order. Yeah, Mahika? Yeah. Hey, so I was wondering, um, so since like, obviously as we know, like all spring quarter events and stuff are canceled, like for, couldn't all of the money that you had allotted for like, obviously it's there. And then secondly, like for the stuff that you have spent, can it be refunded? Like, I don't know what you spent on. Like, I know we were talking about signboards and like Bruin sure. walk sign, like just like different things on campus and also like ASUCLA room fees, if there's anything like that. Like, I just feel like you have a lot of money for advertising already, unless I'm mistaken and I'm missing something. Please yes, I can. Next week, I can maybe present a better idea of our budget because on first glance, if you just do an SGA run through it, it looks like we have a lot of money. It's not really the case. Um, for example, things like a $6,000 fee that we have to pay to my UCLA, a $5,000 has already been spent to Daily Bruin, and then a lot of um, programming funds that have been allocated to us, which we can't touch, are included in that estimate. Um, I would say like the amount that we probably have that's, I'll call unrestricted at this point, is roughly like fifteen thousand um, dollars, and in regards to a lot of the different fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, and a lot of the, the costs that you mentioned, like um, uh, for like events and venue spaces, my finance team was actually applying to funding sources for that because in our budget I only included about a thousand dollars for programming, um, so a lot of that was programming funds that we can't tap anyway, so that money was never there for us if that makes sense. Like we can't spend it on other stuff as we please. Okay, Isabel. Yeah, um, I just wanted to go back to the idea of like using student fee money, like redirected towards the election. Um, because I'm not sure if we are allowed to redirect money like that. Uh, because like it's not. Like in the referendum, like they have specific places that they have to go, and it would be like, oh, oh no, can you guys hear me? Yeah, you're kind of slow. Kind of. I, I think I can just relay what you, you said. said. Like, um, I, I would encourage you to type. Okay. I think what Isabel's asking is that it's <laughs> not possible for. Uh, well, you go, Isabel. Well, I'm kind of, I understand the gist of what she's okay, saying, okay. I think. Um, and that's like, I understand that referenda are like, because the referenda language mandates that you spend money a certain way, we can't necessarily divert money. Um, but I think there are some unrestricted funding sources that USAC receives um, that can be diverted. Um, and so that would just require like working with Robert who works with, and, and Roy and probably SGA to figure out what those different sources are and how much is left to those. Um, it could also be something that we think about, like, for example, if there's money left in contingency, then it could be that we apply, election board applies to contingency and, you know, pretends it's a program. Um, so I think there's different ways that if we were creative, we could work around that. Um, but that was just the ask. But I understand where you're coming from. It's, I know it's not as easy as just like taking money from little one line, line of account and putting it into another. Okay. Um, Millen. Yeah, um, sorry if this was already said, it kind of got cut off when you spoke, Navi, but just like a quick question. Um, because like it's going to be online, could you maybe go over your plan in terms of like debates and new candidates, stuff like that, like how you plan on um, moving everything online, like besides the postage you talked about? Yeah, so at this moment, I can't just because I had finals until end of last week as well. And my team actually met the first day that we could yesterday and had some preliminary conversations. And a, a lot of our conversations were yesterday were more broader conversations about what we're going to do um, and we're looking at platforms that we can um, like that we can use to host things like 
debates and meet the candidates. Debates is actually pretty easy. I think that um, we'll be able to be successful with just the Zoom. Meet the candidates, mm -hmm. however, requires like interactivity, which I think is really hard to achieve over, uh, which is hard to achieve over Zoom. So we're looking into alternative platforms for that or figuring out what are some interesting ways that we can try to drive engagement, um, and even if we had to not use that event. Um, but that's all work in progress. Okay, Naomi. Um, her flight got canceled, so she's figuring it out right now. Oh, shoot, okay. Um, okay, Naomi, just let me know when you um, are ready. Shahama. I'm good to, no, I was gonna, Go okay. Ahead. I can go. Go ahead, okay. Naomi. Um, I had, I mean, I think you kind of addressed this already because you said like you guys haven't really worked out all the kinks and whatnot, but I was going to ask about um, just like on-campus presence in terms of like flyering and um, the signage that usually goes up. Like, mm -hmm. have you guys discussed on if that's still going to be like able to happen? I don't know. Um, so there was a very small conversation about that. And so I can add in my thoughts just in general. Um, so typically, I don't think elections really, elections board doesn't really do too much physical signage around campus. Um, I think in the past they've done maybe like, or last year when I worked at the Daily, when the Daily Bruin told me that they maybe put like um, flyers in the, like the, what they call the, the, paper collection areas. Um, this year we were planning on significant investment to um, like physical printed material. Um, from the candidate's point of view, I mean, we can reserve or I can try to work with UCLA events to re-reserve um, uh, election walk for people, for candidates to put up their um, sign boards. I just, I like, and I can present that as an option. I'm not just, I'm just not sure how, um, what's it called? How effective it would be for candidates to use their, um, to use their money um, and the limited money that they have per the campaign expenditure limit to spend it on, um, on, on the sign boards. Is that, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, I guess the broader concern is just, um, as you guys are like making these decisions, it's, as somebody who ran last year, like last minute changes, Kiana wasn't the most organized person and like last minute changes are really crappy and they kind of like disadvantage candidates. And I know that you guys are like working your hardest to help put this election together. So I just think like, um, just keeping mindful of like the candidates and like how this, this is already a stressful time for a lot of people. And then, you know, significant changes in this way could also, um, cause an even more of a stress sure i think my team's goal is to kind of get as much ironed out as we can by candidate orientation that way we can share that information or campaign orientation so that we can we can share that right. information i'm also not one that wants to i'm not i also don't want to change something like a week before it's supposed to happen so my idea is like laying everything out um once again um or just like laying everything out as we would um, during campaign orientation and have it stand for the entirety of the election season. But I mean, I was appointed, I would say like week two, week three of spring quarter. So it, it still took me about like two months to get just a normal election planned. And so now I have about a week and a half to plan whatever this will be. Not mine. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Okay, um, Shahama. Um, I'm going to skip over for now. You're gonna skip. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, hi, Navi. Um, a hi. couple things. So the first thing is, um, one thing I've been doing in my meetings with admin has been like really emphasizing, and one thing we talked about on council is given that we have referenda on the ballot, um, engagement in this election is really important. Um, and like for students to vote is really important. And um, I think we all want more support from admin and encouraging the student body to vote especially during a time like this. And I think I'm just letting you know that because like, if you could, I, you might already be doing it, but if you could like take over that role more for me in terms of in your meetings with admin, definitely like emphasizing the need for them to engage in elections. And that could be through anything from Chancellor Block sending out a campus-wide email um, to our undergraduates at least that like encourages them to vote to like just more institutions. Okay 
emotional support. So that's like a suggestion I have. Um, Just real quick yeah. to that comment. Like, that's great, but I don't have meetings with admin. I don't have that access that you do. So unless you would like to connect me with those kinds of people, except for, of course, Dr. Geller. That's um, who I would recommend. Saying, that's okay, who I would yeah. recommend in terms of coordinating sure. those emails. Um, the, the other thing I was going to um, mention was in terms of funding, I just want to like reiterate too, is like with a lot of our referenda fee, it's hard to, it's impossible to move money yeah. from one way to another. We do have like some unrestricted funds, whether like contingency is relatively unrestricted besides their guidelines, which can be changed and then also discretionary. Um, so I would propose um, in like meeting with Roy um, or Jessica and figuring out like, figuring out where you would want that money to come from because I think mm -hmm. us on council are um, like not sure where that money would come from. So maybe like getting a sure. proposal together, like you suggest suggested of where that money should come from would be a good idea. Of course. Sweet. I mean, like, like I said, like a lot of these are, I mean, I've had this thought for quite a while now, but after I just talked to my team yesterday and it's between now and then not too much time to actually implement yeah. and make proposals or talk to admin or talk to you know, whoever. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so that's all I have for now. Um, Joanna. Um, have you, what platforms are you considering using for the Meet the Candidates? Right now, I mean, we're thinking about doing things like Zoom for the breakouts, but also we're trying to do things like maybe host a candidate on the elections board like social media page like one a day or one every hour for a certain day um we're trying to explore novel events events platforms so if you just like do a search for like virtual events platforms we're trying to look into some of those that might be like conducive to that interactivity that we're looking for but we're also trying to use we also don't want to learn an entire new software for just one event or pay a lot of money for for just this one event um and so i think we're also we might be trying to rely heavily on like instagram and like facebook and those types of like typical venues um to get some engagement mm. and i mean one of the ideas that we had was as simple as like uh the candidate starts a live stream or something at their own apartment and then shares um okay. and then like uh, sends that information to the elections board and then the elections board um, like also then shares that on their own our own sites and um, and then students can go to there. There's a lot of there's a lot of things we can do, but there's a lot that we haven't explored yet either. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, Brandon. Hi. Um, quick question. Right now we are in a question and answer section right not a comment section you can yes. uh, to, to navi you can comment to him too though um i first i wanted to comment on the budget thing um earlier tonight we had a member of the public uh, discuss the financial hardship that many student workers are facing um while i understand the desire to expand the budget to um to increase turnout, I am worried that um, we have so many members of our community hurting right now, and that giving the money to giveaways um, isn't distributing it in a way that like most directly um, tries to like solve the problems created by the coronavirus pandemic. Sure, and I'm not suggesting that we suck all of the information or suck all the funding from whatever's left over I think a portion of it could be beneficial because ultimately um, a lot of the what the referendum are trying to accomplish are spaces activities programs for different underserved com com communities and so um, getting getting as many students to vote for those for those proposals is in the benefit of all students as well and I think driving and I'm not saying that like driving voter turnout should be is more important than you know the financial hardship students face but it's still something important that we have to consider and something that we should keep in mind as we approach the situation okay uh thank you one other question um have you considered suspending all on campus campaigning 
considering that the coronavirus spreads often by touch or by like getting within six feet of another person and handing out flyers could potentially spread the virus and that students have unequal access to campus at the current time. These administration has urged them to go home. So certain candidates would have access to campus and certain candidates wouldn't. Yeah, we haven't had a discussion on suspending on campus campaigning just because we didn't think anybody would actually want to campaign on campus, but um, we, we could. Thank you. Okay, Lily. This is like not related to elections. I'm really sorry, but I just wanted to ask Jessica if we could set up a time to talk TGIF because we might have money left in the budget that we can either figure out something with election board or ideally like help set up some sort of student relief like budget with TGIF funds. Yeah, we can chat about that later. Sick. Thank you. Okay, uh, anybody else that I'm missing? Navi, I would also like encourage, I think Brandon's point is really good, just that like, we don't want people unfairly capitalizing on the fact that it hasn't been explicitly prohibited with online campaigning. Like if there's a candidate who's on campus who like sure. is doing that for some reason, like, I, I also agree that's probably not going to happen, but, like, maybe just in case, like, outlining that it's prohibited um, might be a good idea. Um, but that's totally up to you. I mean, it makes sense, so I'll just, have to, I'll just talk to the board about it, and we can make that change. Great. Okay. Other questions or comments? I did have a question. I mean, you guys talked about on-campus campaigning. That also includes signboards, too, so I would think that that means that those two things would be eliminated or like how would that work um we could theoretically separate the two um leafletting from signboards um i think maybe the best way to approach this is um, i can send out a poll to the candidates um, and see what they would like to do uh, in regards to signboards and on campus campaigning um, I think on-campus campaigning makes sense to not to not, not not do that because of you know public health concerns as well. But I think if if students want to put up signboards and they're around campus slash near campus, um, and I do they did provide me with their locations um, or where they're planning on staying, and it seems like most I want to say like ninety percent are around campus. Um, so yeah, so we can ask them. What. Can I, oh, sorry, do I have to? Yeah, go ahead, you're good, you're good, you're good. My one concern with that again, though, is that I, don't, for the few, most students, I mean, even if candidates are disproportionately around campus, most students might not be. So I think it would get, it could give an unfair advantage to certain candidates who are on campus, who have access to voters versus other ones who decided to go home based on a recommendation of the university that it, they need to depopulate most of the campus and the people who must stay should stay, but the people who can leave should leave. Um, so I think that's something you should consider like as you deliberate all of that. In regards to signboards or in regards, in, in regards, I mean, leafletting, I think is just like a safety hazard explicitly because you're one person has to touch a leaflet and give it to another person. So that violates social distancing rules. But in terms of signboards, it's a, it's, it's an unfair access. It, it would create unfair access during the election because certain people who, like for example, let's say there's a candidate who lives out of state. And this doesn't even, I live in state, but like let's say there was a candidate who lives out of state. Um, then they would not, uh, they would not be able to put up a signboard. Noted, thank you. Other comments or questions for Navi? Anybody? Okay. Thank you, Navi. Um, so I think like one thing that I would want to ask council members is like, are we comfortable continuing on with online? Like, like for spring quarter, I mean, it sounds like the general consensus is obviously like, yes, but I just want to like 
I think, ask that to make sure everybody's good moving forward. What's the question? Like, that we're comfortable moving forward as scheduled, essentially, um, for spring quarter, just like to confirm that. Yeah, I think we are. Yeah. The yeah. candidates have done a lot of work um, filling out their packets, getting them submitted. And I think moving, and also those of you working on referenda have done a lot of work prepping them. I think it's in the best interest of everyone to move forward with a spring election, give students a way to stay engaged outside of the virtual classroom, and make sure that there isn't a gap when you all graduate or term out and there isn't another set of leaders ready to keep moving as we come back onto campus. I also think not having an election is actually a constitutional violation anyway, because the Constitution specifically states that the election has to happen in spring quarter every year. Um, so it, we, we would have to find a way around that. But Is yeah. anybody opposing us moving forward with the spring election, or are we just talking? I'm, I'm good with it. I'm good. Sounds good to me. Okay, I see Shahama and everybody else kind of going forward too. Okay, um, <laughs> let's, okay. Then we are going to move on um, with the next discussion item, which is COVID-19 updates. I think just broadly speaking. Um, so we're going to talk about that. It's, it's really more so just like a general updates like um, I don't know if like admin has any updates for us as well. I know I've been kind of in contact with AVC DeLuca about what's going on like with people living on the hill as well as Can I ask workers. a question to Josh? Yeah, 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 go ahead. Josh, so I had a, my refund deposited like today or yesterday, I don't remember but I haven't gotten my housing charged yet. I don't know if there's any delays with that or if I'm just dumb and like, I don't know if like we're gonna get charged or what point, if you know any of that. Yeah, um, so currently right now we are delayed. I just wanna be very transparent with everybody. Uh, the university was not prepared for this as you are completely, you, you all know, we did not anticipate or, or, or even think that this was going to happen. So uh, we got hit very hard. About 85% uh, of the hill has now moved off um, and everybody is wanting refunds. Um, and we are processing them. So we wanna be very clear with that, but it will take some time. Um, the, the refunds will come based upon the day that the individual has checked out from housing. Um, and so we prorate from the day that they have checked out from housing. So we had folks that checked out immediately, and we are still having people trickle out as they come. And then when we get back from spring break, we'll still have people um, who will check out. Um, and so we don't have a, we are, we are in the process right now of refunding um, or, or, or cleaning up everybody's bill, but it will take a, it will take a couple of weeks. Um, I just want to. What that. about students like me that I moved out March 11th, but I still have stuff on campus Yeah, because I'm in another state and I can't currently go back to get yeah. my stuff. And so what I would explain to you is any of our out-of-state or international students, they should call the housing number as soon as they can. Um, we are open Monday through Friday, Pacific Standard Time from 8.30 to, uh, sorry, 9 to 4 is the housing number. Definitely call. Uh, they will take cancellations over the phone, even if your items are not out of the room. But then we do need to arrange to have your items taken out of the room and housing is working with all the individuals about uh, each individual about how that can get done, whether that's uh, a friend who comes, a parent who comes. Um, so we are working with people. So um, Audrey, uh, if you are out of state uh, and you'd like to cancel, make sure that you call first thing tomorrow morning um, so that you can, close, you can cancel as, as soon as you possibly can to save yourself money um, and then work with the housing representative uh, with how you can get your items out of the room. All right, thank you. 
No problem. Good uh, Josh, a follow up. So, so refunds. I will. So I'm talking about like my financial aid refund that just got dispersed. But I'm asking if you know anything about specifically when I will get charged for regular housing. Like I'm still at the university apartment, so I'm not going to be moving out, yeah. and I haven't seen my phone bill get charged yet for housing. So I'm wondering if there's any delays with that as well. Uh, there should not be delays with that. Okay. Um, you typically pay it the first of the month. Is that accurate? Yeah. And you haven't been billed yet? No. Oh, well, girl, I will get on that. Uh, you were muted. Josh, you muted yourself. Josh, you muted yourself. <laughs> um, Josh. Sorry. Hi. Did I mute myself? Yes. I'm really yeah. good at that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> learning the zoom let me um let me check on that of when billing will go out joanna i will contact you directly but okay. i will also uh let um i'll email the entire board uh to okay. find out exactly what's going uh on with those processes so, so, okay. i would say that it's not just joanna i'm experiencing the same thing so maybe that's like a larger conversation too yeah so and, just and to clear the question is uh, when will they be, the people who are remaining with us, when will the bill go out, particularly apartments? Um, just in general housing, I think. Yeah, uh-huh, because I live on the hill, and this is. Yep, so um, you know what I can do is I'll take these calls. I will also step away for just a moment. I'll call our director uh, and see if I can get you an answer today. Okay, uh, like thank you. Um, Josh, I have another question. Yep. Is the deadline being pushed from April 1st or is it going to continue to be April 1st? Uh, clarify that question. I'm sorry. April 1st for what? For, for housing payments. Sorry. I will find out for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, just to reiterate to everyone, including council members, there is an order to when you're supposed to speak. So just make sure if you can to type one in the chat if you want to speak. For members of the public, like that's why we had public comment. So the students who are randomly speaking right now are other council members, and I've encouraged them to put their positions in their name so it doesn't look like they're just randomly speaking. Um, Lily, you wanted to add something? Oh, okay, you're good? Okay, are there other council members who have any updates for COVID-19? Sorry, but how do I change my name? Um, so when you like look at your own video, there's like a dot dot dot. I could name you. Name. I got you. I got you. Okay. I could. <laughs> yeah, Naomi. Um, I also wanted to let everyone know uh, within this space that um, the Academic Senate did take a few votes, particularly the Undergraduate Council. Um, while it's not public information yet, the moment it becomes public information, I will definitely be like sharing with you all what the votes were in regards to. Um, but, well, I think Robert also knows too, because the chair of the Academic Senate let him know as well, but we have updates. We're just not allowed to like present them yet, but we wanted to let y'all know that the Academic Senate has been working and has been meeting in various um, committees to really discuss this at large and how it's going to affect academics. Yeah, um, Brandon. One question for Naomi. Um, I don't want you to disclose anything that like uh, is not allowed to be disclosed uh, for a variety of reasons yet, but does anything uh, that the Academic Senate ha that it's any policy changes is made, does it affect our conversation tonight? It does, but not really. Like we can but, continue to, to advocate for what we want to advocate. Like it, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I, I don't feel comfortable like completely talking no, about it. No, just no, because I understand. It was, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it kind of does, but like, it, it's, I would say that they're minor changes, honestly. But my, my point is more like, is the discussion item still worth having, or the action item? The discussion about past no record? 
yes, the discussion on like how council is going to move forward to that with that. Yeah, I would say it's still worthwhile. Thank you. Okay, um, Kim. Um, so hi, Niami. Um, so in terms of like professors, kind of, I know some professors don't are not very well versed with technology and that they would need support. Is there anything that like academic senate is kind of doing or like mandating to help these professor, to like help support professors who don't know how to navigate the online world? I mean, I don't know if you guys have been seeing, but there have been like Zoom, like, what would you call them? Like how to use Zoom? Mm -hmm. workshop that all professors and students have been using okay um, that's good so that's like one of the main things i know we had also talked about um like pacific standard time recording lectures um me and robert are still talking to michael the chair of the academic senate about that just because um like i had mentioned to like a lot of people it's an academic freedom issue and that's going to be an issue that's a lot harder to navigate and I've already been getting messages. I got a message from my own professor that has let me know that she's not going to be recording her lectures because of academic freedom and also because she feels that it's not useful. It's not productive. Like she wants it to be a very like having a conversation and it's not productive in that way. Um, so I thought that was going to be one of our, I mean, that was our discussion item. Was that supposed to be? I don't think so. But um, that's just an update. And once I talk more with the academic senate chair, I think um, we'll be able to like talk more about that too. And I believe that's in our list of demands in the letter, right? Yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't think, I, I, I think for these specific discussions, we should include it in that discussion, not in the COVID-19 one. Because that, that's in our list of demands, like Naomi said. Okay, got it. Yeah, so that's, I mean, keep sending me like your guys' concerns. Um, I would just say, like, we just want to remind everyone that uh, Academic Senate can't necessarily like force professors to do certain things or like force academic departments to do certain things. They've been using language like empower and encourage because they set the policies and, you know, professors have the ability to like make choices. And um, Dean Blandivi, Dr. Geller, like you guys can feel free to jump in and like correct any of this or like add on to any of these discussion items too. Um, I'll, I'm, I'm in the same boat as all of your faculty trying to learn how to use the various online tools to teach. Um, they are providing us with a number of resources, including some video workshops specifically for faculty. And um, I found a number of um, Facebook groups that are um, restricted to faculty who are making the transition to teaching online that also have useful resources and are being supportive. But it's going to be a challenge for some of us, just as it is for you. The guidance we're getting is to be um, understanding and flexible when it comes to grading. So hopefully, um, Mahika, you're making me laugh. I'm sorry. Um, hopefully, it will um, work out, and um, I'll let you know in two weeks after I do my first online class what it seems like. But I'm, I think everyone's trying to find ways to make the classes effective for the students um, to the, the extent possible. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Geller. Um, Millen's next, right? Yeah, hi. Um, I just wanted to really quickly talk about what was mentioned during public comment for Delaney, who talked about like the student workers. Um, just to give an update, like FSC is planning on publicizing um, like all the resources that we've been getting from Kim and that Delaney sent me tomorrow. I know that like for everyone that's out there, FSC has received like a ton of DMs about student workers and the fees that we're receiving. So um, just so you all know, like we're gonna work on that a lot with Kim and with Robert um, and admin to try to figure out like the best way to compensate student workers. Yeah, I really appreciate all the graphics that you have done, Melin, and your office. They're really cute and 
they're really helpful in terms of like disseminating the information, information. to different students. And like if you if you keep receiving, receiving other up. questions, feel free to share them to me too. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Uh, the only the only other uh, comment I had on this, which actually ties into commencement, um, but just to be transparent about my meetings as well, is um, I've been meeting with uh, Dean Turner about the uh, commencement and then how we can go about um, making sure commencement online is something that's useful for students as well as a um, in-person graduation that's be being delayed until a later time where people are able to participate in uh, graduation. So I've been having those meetings, but then also how do we go about making sure things like spring sing, um, things like um, other events that happen during spring quarter are able to still somehow happen in some sort of way, dance marathon, um, like what's going to happen with those uh, programs and events and how can they be supported? So. I had a meeting today and then I have a meeting tomorrow as well um, with Dean Turner in a pretty large task force on how to move forward. So that's like my only update on this regard. Does anybody else have any updates they wanna add um, about like just broad COVID-19 updates? Okay. Um, oh yeah, Millen. Um, also, I don't know if this is mention, men, ah, mentioned, but Kim made the uh, Facebook group called, I think it's like, what's the link to get it? tinyurl.com slash USAC help. So if anyone wants to join that, then that's where like council posts continuous updates about um, like anything that we have during this time. Dean Blandisi. Uh, I was just going to offer that. Um, I that I was with you all two weeks ago to hear a lot of the frustrations uh, about the changing fear is actively being Deep listened to and, um, and folks are um, discussing, oh, yeah? I think, I think it's breaking up a Does little bit. Do you mind turning off your um, video? It might make it more clear. Sure. Sorry, thank you. Yeah, how's that? I, okay, I think we can hear you better. Okay, so I was with you all two weeks ago. Uh, Zoya and I came in the tail end of a meeting or maybe in the middle, midway point of a meeting uh, to, to talk to more, to listen to you about the level of frustration that you're I'm looking at the notes here is I took, we took very diligent notes about um, the concerns that you were at. Um, you've seen a tremendous change and number of you have been consulted on a variety of things, depending on the subject matter that uh, and you sit on the council table and you're for, um, to, to bring to light further concerns that you have so we can channel those concerns to different parts we can do that but you're speaking regularly with folks. you're speaking regularly with folks you know we we um the the public company we have worked very diligently to try to assess what scope of the problem is related to student employee to address. This is clearly a new normal and we're gonna actively continue to work on that. I've been meeting with CHR, with financial yeah, aid, with scholarships, uh, resource center. Shared. Oh, okay. How do I stop sharing? How's that? There you go. Can you hear me now? You that was just my done. desktop. There we go. Okay, so just that was just my desktop. Um, so my point here is that we've been listening and we're going to keep listening and this is an evolving um, situation and we're doing the best that we can. And if you want to bring certain 
things to light for us to uh, focus on. Focus right now for the past uh, two days has been to really ramp up and understand how best to deploy um, from a systems perspective, the resources that the economic crisis response team has for student employees. Uh, there's lots of task forces that are getting up and running to think about how do we support student life. And um, we're thinking a lot about how do we support students um, that are registered with they get access to in the remote online space is supportive of their needs. Um, you know, Mick and I and others spend um, countless hours on Zoom trying to problem solve and think through through how best we want to bring forward now would be a good time or over email or in person or I don't know, Mick, if you have anything else to offer. Yeah, Mick. Uh, thanks, Robert, and uh, a lot. thanks for so, Well, Maria, I still think that you're, uh, Dean Blindese, I think you're, uh, the mic's still on. Vice uh, Chancellor uh, uh, DeLuca, I think you're good to go. Uh, all right, I'll play Zoom bingo here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay. I uh, just want to pick up on a couple of things that both Robert mentioned and all of you have thoughtfully commented on and echo what uh, Dean Blandesi has indicated. Um, the staff is spending countless hours remotely also um, in dealing with things on campus in the physical space as needed. Uh, we are equally uh, trying to think ways to make spring quarter meaningful in a virtual world. Uh, some of you talked about the big footprint events and what does that all mean now in a non-in-person environment. The sole advisors are working uh, almost daily with a lot of those student leaders. Uh, just had a large Zoom call with the entire staff and they are literally gonna uh, personally connect with all of the almost 1,500 registered campus organizations, understand their needs. Uh, we're also getting multiple Zoom Pro subscriptions so that any student org can go through their sole advisor to be able to get a meeting link um, for their engagement. A lot of groups are trying to think about any innovative ways to do online versions of their show or their major spring quarter event. Um, I know the big footprint things, it won't be a whole Spring Sing show, but I know they're looking at components of that and how that might be streamed or done. Um, I think Dance Marathon is thinking about ways about, about a virtual fundraising campaign of some sort. Um, so I just wanted to assure you that the, the programmatic ends um, a lot of staff are trying to work with you all in any of your ideas. As Robert mentioned, there are some committees that will involve both students and then a number of us will be sitting on those from different lenses of the university about meaningful engagement as we go to uh, through spring quarter. Um, then specifically looking at what could be some of those components to make um, a virtual commencement not only on the degree converting commencements, but also for all of our uh, community graduate um, celebrations that are student initiated. And then also thinking about the holistic concept of commencement, um, if and when we can think about it in an in-person setting at a later date. So it'd be the combination of all of our student celebrations along with uh, the campus celebrations. Thank you, Associate Vice Chancellor DeLuca and Dean Blandese. Um, do any council members have a question for um, Dean Blandese or AVC DeLuca? Anyone? Um, uh, AVC DeLuca, I think I have a question just about what I had brought up earlier um, in terms of 
uh, elections and supporting USAC with our election turnout this year. Um, do you have any ideas just maybe off the top of your head about how um, administration might be able to promote elections? Well, uh, listening to your concern about trying to form community engagement, um, I think we'll equally do that. So probably the idea I would have is to look about, you know, there might be a way of postings or information sharing in the regular channels that will be going out from the university side in multiple settings. Um, as you all know, the university doesn't necessarily have a hand or try to take a hand um, in the student elections, but under these unprecedented circumstances, I'm, I'm sure we could find uh, ways where that is cross-promoted or an encouragement or sharing a link or some of the reasons, um, you know, some of the resources uh, the eboard chair outlined as possible outreaches, um, both in advance and then uh, to encourage um, active engagement, you know, in a virtual world. Okay, thank you. Um, and Dean Blandizi, we have uh, multiple requests from uh, council members um, who are asking if you could email the information that you said to us, um, just because it was a little difficult to hear if, that, if that's possible for you. You want me to email information about my responses to you? Is that what the ask was? Yeah, yeah. What you had initially stated, all the information that you were saying about um, support and then with ECRT, um, it was a little broken up. So if it's possible just to send it in the email form as well, um, we'd really appreciate that. Okay. We will do that tomorrow. Sweet. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you both Dean Blendizi and AVC DeLuca for coming out. I know Millen has one last question for both of you all. Yeah, so this is a question, question sorry, a question for um, admin too, but um, I know that recently it came out that UCLA is considering being like a, a substitute like hospital space for COVID-19 patients. Um, there was like a few students that messaged me with their concerns about it. I personally like applaud the university for taking that on and for having UCLA be that space, but I think students are just concerned, especially the ones that are staying on campus that will be still commuting to campus. Um, in terms of like their own safety. So are there any like precaution methods that are being taken place that you would like to say about that? Uh, I'll start first and Josh and Maria, you want, want to do it. Um, so there is nonstop communication with UCLA Health. Both the health system and the campus has enacted our emergency operation centers. So there's daily cross information. Uh, we're getting lots of requests and even Governor Newsom reached out to universities to utilize their dormitory or residence hall space. UCLA's plan is that our residence hall space will be first and foremost to support our students. As Josh had mentioned, uh, we still don't have 100% knowledge of who's coming back or not coming back. And secondarily, outside of those that live on the hill, uh, our housing would be used for any UCLA students still in the area if they uh, get to a situation where they might need to be isolated. So our student housing would be related to students. What the university has partnered with uh, UCLA Health in case things spike up and Ronald Reagan is overrun is that the university will offer up uh, rooms in the Luskin Conference Center and the UCLA Guest House. So those are our backup rooms in case the health system needs additional space for isolation or quarantine of patients. So that's our plan as of, you know, there's a daily call as this is monitored, uh, but that's the university's plan on uh, kind of the governor's call to the colleges and universities in California. Thank you. Millen, does that answer your question? Yeah, I just also just wanted, because I know some students have like voice of concerns and I'm sure that admin would do this, but if there is like a clear decision of um, which rooms would be open up and like when this would take place that all students get an email or some sort of notice about that before it happens. Uh, duly noted, thank you. Any 
final questions on general COVID-19 updates um, for Nick and um, Dean Blandizi. Um, I'm not sure if you all plan on staying around for our letter to administration or any of the other topics, but any broad questions for um, Associate Vice Chancellor DeLuca or Dean Blandizi? Okay. Um, then we will move forward. Um, I know there's been requests and now that Naomi, our academic affair commissioner's um, flight has been moved in like the next um, hour, um, if I'm correct, that we want to move potentially the letter um, that we're sending about grading, among other issues as well, um, up to do it now. Um, is, how do council members feel about that? Is, I think we should make a vote to move this just so it's official. Do you need someone to motion or are you asking for opinions? Um, you can motion. <laughs> I motion to move up the discussion on, what does it say on the agenda? The letter, Our letter in support of past no record. Okay, is there a I second? I can't second myself. Second. I second. Okay, oh. Lalo seconds. Okay, bear with me as I go down the roll call. Sorry, let me. Um, you should have your mics ready, especially if you know you're next. Yeah, I would appreciate that too. Okay. Um, IVP? Yes. EVP? Yeah. Gen Rep 1? Yes. Gen Rep 2? Yes. Gen Rep 3? Yep. AAC? Yes. Ah, CEC? Yes. CSC? Yes. CAC? Yes. FAC? FAC? Is, is back here? Lily, my Lily where are you at? Okay. Uh, FSC? Yeah. Okay. SWC? Yep. Okay. Transfer rep? Yes. And international student rep? Yes. ISR? Yes, yes, yes. I'll see. Thank you. Okay. By a vote of 13 to 0 to 0, the motion passes and we are moving up our um, topic on the letter for pass, no pass. Um, to now. Um, so once again, this is a discussion about the letter that USAC has been drafting to um, UCLA administration, which um, all the council members should have access to. Um, I do want to be clear, can though, you that send I, it somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I can share it. Um, one second, let me. Okay, I'll just share it first via the normal way, and then I'll send the link to um, copy link. Um, okay, there you are. Um, okay, so I do want to be clear, though, that like the name of this agenda item is somewhat of a um, misnomer just because it's calling for other things as well. Right now we have uh, related to online instruction, final examinations, and spring break as well as items that are currently listed in the letter. Um, so with that, um, I think like we're just going to start it off based off the feedback that we've heard from the intake form that we sent out um, yesterday evening, um, what people are hearing, what people aren't hearing. Um, Naomi, I know we all particularly want to hear from you given that you do have to go soon. Um, and you are the Academic Affairs Commissioner. Um, so I guess we'll start it there. We'll operate this the same way as all the other discussions where if you just wanna speak, just put a one or whatever down and we'll go through that order. So, yeah. Sorry, Robert, were you saying something to me? Like you want Oh, me I was just something? saying that like, I know that we're all oh, okay. wanting to hear from you. Oh, okay, um, okay, okay. Before just you head out too. Um, Brandon? You're muted. Naomi could go first. I'm just off. Naomi should speak first because she has to leave soon. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I think there's, I guess we can start by like, I would really want the people who like also help with the letter to like participate too, because like we have had a really long conversation about this and we've had like multiple back and forths. Um, and I also just want to say, like a few days ago, when Robert first called me about this, I was completely opposed. Um, didn't support it, like, at all. Also, because I was, 
well, one, I was just thinking about like how the academic senate would implement this and how it would affect like a bunch of other requirements. And then we talked a lot about how subsequent requirements that would be needed, like for example, um, like major requirements or like college requirements would also have to change in order to support something like this so that it wouldn't affect students. Um, I definitely, I would say jump ship after talking to like a lot of the primary organizers at Yale who are also, um, you know, really like advocating for this. And then at a lot of the other IVs and elite institutions who are like completely in support of it. Um, I think people have talked about it already when we talk about equity and when we talk about what is the most equitable solution, I definitely think this is in line with being the most equitable solution. Um, I'm already getting tons of complaints from students on professors being unwilling to record lectures, international students complaining about like, and rightfully so, complaining about not being able to access lectures. I think that it's not only going to impact international students, it's going to impact um, like, predominantly low income students, people who don't have access, students with disabilities. I think that there are a range of concerns. Um, and I also think that there's a very clear difference with people opting in to take online classes versus being forced to take online classes. And um, just how people are saying like, we've been forced into, or we would be forced into a system. A lot of students are being forced into learning that they've never been accustomed to. And I can go on about the reasons why um, I'm, in full support of universal pass no record. But um, the biggest thing I think that stands out to me and when I hear people's stories, a lot of it has, a lot of it is rooted and I will just be very honest to me in self-interest like, and I get it, especially someone coming from you know, being a black woman coming from a low income background, I get what it's like to want to put your community first and to want to, you know, succeed and go to law school so that I can give back to my community. But I also understand that when we talk about like students having a choice, a lot of that choice is being taken away from a lot of us. And we've talked about how we haven't seen the full impacts of the virus. We have not seen, we've already seen that you know, unfortunately, UCLA was not prepared for the for anything of this nature. UCLA administration wasn't prepared. And the same kind of stress and anxiety that has been building up, I think will continue to worsen. And I do think that this is being the most proactive. This is one of the most proactive things that I think on the academic side can happen. I think like, I think her name is Giselle. That spoke, or was it, is her name Giselle? Yeah, Giselle. I think Giselle said it best that a lot of us are experiencing a lot of changes. And if one thing could be taken care of, I think it would definitely um, ease the load for a lot of people. And I don't want to go on too much of a tangent. But um, yeah, I think, you know, I would really strongly urge folks who are against this letter being sent to look into the letter some more. Um, it definitely discusses this issue more so at large. And it also um, touches on a lot of other issues that we want to bring up to administration, um, like Zoom recordings and things of that nature too. Yeah, That's thank it. you, Naomi, for sharing. Um, we'll go down through Brandon um, and then Orion. Brandon. Hi, sorry. Hey, My you're good, you're computer good. went in and out. Um, the Wi-Fi just collapsed for a sec. Um, so one one since our discussion on um on I think it was like two days ago. I, I think you muted yourself, Brandon. Hello, do you hear me? You're good now. You're good now. Thank you. Um, since our discussion a couple of days ago, I obviously was, uh, I helped write a good part of the letter the other night. A um, couple of concerns have uh, come up that, like, I think are worth discussing. One is that I'm increasingly worried that professors, if given a universal pass, no pass, will simply change the definition 
of what a passing grade is. So it could become an even worse situation where because professors would maintain the academic freedom to determine what a pass is. So they could make it so if it's universal pass, no pass, then they say 50% of the class will pass and 50% of the class will get no record. And that's gonna be the way it is because like I cannot give um, grades to like, I need to figure, professors might feel like they need to maintain, um, and I don't agree with this, but I think this is what they'll argue that uh, like they need to be able to maintain some form of like academic standard in the classroom. Um, so they will then go and like just change what a pass or, uh, or no record means. Um, that's one major concern. Another major concern I have is that I really think we need to make sure that whatever we propose, um, whatever we propose has very strong council support to administration because I think the worst scenario here for equity is maintaining the status quo. And if we don't have unanimous or near unanimous support on this, I think it's gonna be very difficult to get anything through. Um, and somebody asked this, the input form. I mean, we weren't really using the input form as a whole per se, um, but, and every, the experiences were sort of all over the place. But I will say that there was a very strong, there was a very strong indication from a students of uh, diverse background that uh, universal, uh, it was phrased universal opt-in uh, would be preferred. Um, and that also, it worries me that if council proposes something that the student body, I, uh, somebody brought it up earlier, if the student body is very angry at it and they go to administration and we see a mass mobilization against whatever council does, one, once again, we'd have the most inequitable solution, which is the status quo. And two, council's legit, council over the past week has shown students the power of our advocacy. And I don't think we should waste the, um, the capital we've gained with the student body in advocating for uh, their needs during this difficult time. And we, uh, it's something to keep in mind. But anyway, thank you. Wait, Brandon, I just, how are you gaining, how are you gauging that that was the majority opinion if we're not using this as? I would just go, I mean. Also, I have would, you been I reading? Would, I've I seen very diverse. Off. Okay, okay, I would. Did I you would, count off all of them? Yeah, can I step in too? I would just say that we should definitely not make claims about what was the majority opinion on the poll. I mean, even from my perspective, I I think many students gave many different opinions, and I think all of council had the consensus going in with this input form that it was not to be used as a poll. So I just I don't mean, think we sh I just don't think we should be making judgment calls at all on what is or isn't like polled as a majority when that wasn't the intention. And like I know this because like Brandon and other folks helped create the poll or this input form that that was not the intention of it. So I just want to be careful. With mean, using our language there. That's so. fair. What I will say though is I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry that my usage of the word poll was problematic, but I want to say I read like literally probably a few hundred of the responses and based on those responses, that was the overwhelming consensus that I got from most of them. That's not to say that there weren't very good points to me to be made for universal past. And I think like we can continue to discuss those, but I think it would be this, I, I don't think we should misrepresent what the input form said overwhelmingly, like in terms of individual responses. I'm not giving a percentage though here because that is what a poll would be doing. Okay, um, Orion and then Lily. Oh, Ryan. Okay. Um, Hello. Hello. Yeah. Do you hear me? 
was I muted? Yeah, you were. Okay. Uh, so I, I think um, uh, re regarding what Brandon was saying, and then I'll get back to what I was going to say. Um, I think maybe we should do a generic poll of, you know, students, uh, just so that, like, I, I know that um, we were worried about people answering self-interestedly, but I think that if we do it a large scale survey across a lot of people, then we can get on average whether or not this hurts or harms a lot of people, um, just you know, following standard scientific method protocol. Um, regarding uh, whether we should do universal pass, no pass, uh, sorry, pass, no record versus um, uh, opt-in, um, there, there are definitely a lot of issues with, like in either case, you screw over a different group of people. In the case of um, universal, then you screw over the people who don't have internet access, or you screw over the people that, let's say their grandparent gets this disease and they have to take care of them. And on the other hand, you would screw over the people that are trying to raise their GPA. Um, one, uh, just, just wanted to bring up a, a potential third or fourth option here that we just haven't really talked about, would be um, universal academic renewal. Um, so academic renewal is a way that, uh, like usually academic renewal is for, let's say, it's not offered at UCLA, but in other places, if you get, let's say, a D or an F, um, you will be allowed to uh, get that off of your um, transcript um, or get it uh, to not be factored into your GPA by, um, you know, by asking you by like retaking the class later. Uh, potentially, we could do something where um, we make uh, academic renewal universal so that way if you do mess up next quarter and um, you don't want something uh, affecting you, you can uh, remove it from counting for your GPA. Um, just wanted to bring that up as like a third option because I think there's like a saying where whenever you think that there's two options, um, uh, yes, Naomi, you can take a class again if you fail, but let's say you don't fail, let's say you get a C. Um, and that's bringing down your GPA a lot. This would be the option for you to um, to to make up for it. Um, anyway, just wanted to bring that up uh, as a uh, thing that we can talk about here. Third option, because uh, there, there's a saying that like if you if you think that there's two options and neither of them is you know perfectly satisfactory, there's always a third option. So. Yeah. Lily? Okay, I have a couple of things to say, so I like wrote them down. Um, but I think the most important thing is when we talk to the student body is educating what, we're actually, what our intentions are here and what equity means and what privilege and credit versus discredit is, because there's a complete difference between disadvantage and not being able to boost your GPA. And I fully sympathize with people that want to boost their GPA, but you're implying that you are going to do so. And we don't know which professors are going to be accommodating or like using Zoom properly. There are so many issues that are going to come up throughout the quarter that students are going to want us to speak up about and this would be a preventative measure for students that are in those camps, not just students that are struggling, um, but students that have every intention of making straight A's, but doing so is out of their control. Um, and I think we just really need to have that talk. And I know like Kalachi spoke a lot about it when we wrote the letter. Um, and yeah, I like, I don't know. I, it was very disheartening to hear that students struggling should just withdraw from the university. And 
I, I'm like kind of speechless by that because we're a community at the end of the day and we need to support each other over supporting our GPAs. Like I would fully love to boost my GPA, I would, but people that are going through struggles that like come first. And that's why I'm on USAC. That's why I serve on this council. Yeah, thank you, Lily. Um, and Naomi, let me know if like you are about to leave so I can let you chime in too. But um, I have a few things to say about this, obviously, too. Um, the first thing I want to say is I'm pretty disheartened by like people saying, well, it wasn't a poll, but like a majority of people felt one way or the other. I mean, that's treating it as a poll. And I want to talk about like a few things with that that are like, I think, incredibly problematic. First of all, the people who have access to, in my opinion, the people who have access to take time to take a poll on Facebook are not necessarily the students who are actually heavily impacted to the extent where the intention of this letter was designed to serve. And my impression, especially with the people who have been talking so far, the people who helped create this um, input form, was that we all knew as council members, I think generally speaking, that a large portion of our student body was going to be concerned about a lot of valid concerns about whether it's the GPA increase, the um, graduation requirements, the value of a degree in itself. I think we all knew going in, or I thought we all knew going into this that a large portion of the student body, validly so, would voice those concerns and therefore would inherently want to do an opt-in system. And I also thought that we knew that the people that we were looking for in this input form and elsewhere as well as well were, is there a group of students um, that is heavily impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic that is unable to fairly and equitably participate in courses for this upcoming spring quarter? And by all accounts, I think the input form showed that. I think students and, you know, as, in my position, I have to like receive the emails and I have to receive the messages of students telling me what they're going through, like explaining their trauma to me about what they're going through and why they literally would be forced to take pass no record under any other circumstance. And to say like that this decision is based or should be based off I, I think that this decision needs to be made taking those students into account because those students are like all too often the students who are not taken into account. And yes, they very well might be a numerical minority. Um, but that doesn't, that, that, I don't think that was the point of this. And I thought we were all clear that the point of something, maybe not entirely universal, it doesn't necessarily have to be entirely universal. I'm personally in favor of universal was to make sure that those students are given an equal opportunity. I also just want to like bring up too is when we talk about what counts as a pass or a no pass, I think Brandon, you raised a concern that I've also been hearing is if everything's universally a pass or a no pass. Um, my impression, especially with speaking at my colleagues at Dartmouth, which by the way is a quarter system that transitioned to universal pass no record, they still grade as if they're grading on a letter grade zero through 100 scale. And then everybody a C above would be a pass and a C below would be no, or below a C would be no record. The impression that like I've gotten from every school that I've communicated with is that they still grade the students um, as if they were normally grading. This is a transcript issue, not a grading issue. Um, I also just want to say like full transparency too is like I've invited Ebby to this meeting and Ebby's on this call right now. Ebby is the organizer for this like at Yale and um, has gone through this whole entire process as well with his student government um, as a senator there. So if you all have questions for him, he's here. Um, I also just want to say that I, I also like Orion, I would really want to challenge your language of like saying that any of these options screw over students. I think every single one of us here is like an elected council member and our last like intention is to screw over students in any way. And I think Naomi brought up a really good point earlier, which is 
a lot of this is just misinformation. A lot of this is students who are raising really valid concerns about on both sides about how this will impact them. And it's our job as council members to give them information to make sure they know that they're not going to be negatively impacted. But I would definitely like challenge the language that any of these, that either of these options are intended to screw over students because I think all of us are really trying to like support students in this time. Um, and I just wanna emphasize that. I also just wanna say that like there are claims and like many of these claims about this being disastrous on either end. Um, I think if that were the case, I think at all the other schools that this already moved to, whether it's Columbia, Bernard, Smith, Dartmouth, Stanford's moving in this direction, it's false to say that like, I think this would be, that either of these options are abnormal or destructive because I think that, I know that these options both on both sides have been pursued at other universities. And I just wanna point that out too. Um, that we have been in active communication with those universities about their best practices and to voice those concerns too. So overall, like I do want to express what Lily said too, is that the intention of this was to support students like the student who came on earlier, who they don't have the opportunity to boost their GPA and they don't get the opportunity to kind of work hard and get those grades. Like that, that, that's not an equitable playing field. And I just want to emphasize that moving forward. Um, Kalechi. Ooh, okay. Um, I just, I guess, okay. When I had sent my one, it was kind of because I just wanted clarification on how we're moving forward with the feedback, I guess. Like, mm, like I know we wanted responses. We got responses. I guess, like, how... Are we how are we trying to evaluate this like are we i don't know how council feels as far as like some people were feeling like we should go with kind of what the majority says but then people had concerns because of like what the majority of people who are able to respond to this form would consist of i guess like my general question is kind of like how are we structuring this discussion so it doesn't last three hours um one and then second thing is i'm going to echo that we need to keep in mind like um with this feedback that like the people most heavily affected by all of this likely do not have as much time to spend advocating against or like whatever their feelings are because like people fall on either side um and i think yeah i think it's just like i just want to emphasize it like we keep that in mind is that a lot of um like robert was saying that students who benefit from universal pass might fall into a numerical minority but I just I don't know I feel like while the form and response and like feedback was like very reflective of a lot of different opinions and a lot of different feelings um I think it's just really important that we keep in mind who is able to advocate for themselves right now and who we're hearing from and who is able to be loud about this and who is able to be present in like these conversations and stuff so that's all from me for now Thank you, Kalechi. Um, Naomi, I know you have to go soon, so please, um, please go ahead. Yeah, um, I just wanted to echo something that Joanna said in the group chat that like has struck with me because it's really revealing within this whole situation is that um, no two people within a community like experiences the same. Like communities are not monoliths, and like I can say for myself, looking at my communities, that there are folks who like stand to benefit from this and are very like adamant that we you know go forward with this and there are folks who are going to be just fine I personally think that you know I would hope that I would be one of those that would be just fine but at the end of the day like I'm not here at this table to just advocate for myself I've never been like that and every everything that I talk about is very calculated everything that I advocate for is also very calculated because like folks have echoed here the people that are most marginalized are not on this call they don't have the access to this call. They are relying on folks that have this access that are sitting at this table to echo their concerns and to, you know, project them and to make them loud. So like, I have to leave soon. Everybody's boarding without me. But um, I, again, I just, I kind of hope you guys stay for three hours. I'll be, I'll be coming back. But if not, um, I, you know, I hear everybody's concerns. And I had made the comment earlier about, um, self-interest um 
and that's not to validate anybody's con- concerns. Like everybody's concerns are valid, like I said. Um, but I do think that we need to remember that we want to protect the most marginalized communities at this time. Sweet. Thank you, Naomi. We appreciate it and have a safe flight. Um, we'll miss you. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying safe, to get. Stay healthy. Let's see. I get a whole um, room to myself. I'll be good. I think it's Millen now. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Um, I have a few things to say. So first, um, Robert, I know you said that you invited a leader from I'm not sure which school, but a school that did Universal Pass. I just like in the future, I would recommend that you also invite a leader from like the opt-in yeah. school system because like UC Berkeley did that. It's very easy to invite someone from UC Berkeley, either the student body president or any leader in that, just to make it equal and not biased. Um, I also like just to reflect what Naomi said, like want to just suggest to council to not call students selfish that are like advocating for the opt-in system because the input form and students that made public comment have shown that like they are advocating for the opt-in form for a diverse like different amount of reasons. Um, I also think that like saying that students that are advocating for the opt-in form just want to boost their GPA is slightly dismissive because a lot of students have like advocated saying that they are in support of the opt-in system for like a various different reasons, which is like to get into grad school, to even have the opportunity to get into grad school to show like academic um, increase or to have Latin honors, to get in, get a job. Like there's so many different scenarios that students would want opt-in system that boosting GPA is not like the one solid reason for that. Um, I also just like, and I'm sure other council members have like read through the input form and, sh- and like recognized um, certain forms that st- stood out. So I want to read one that stood out to me. Um, this is for the question that says, if you have a recommendation, what would you recommend as the grading system for next quarter? So this student said, opt-in, universal pass would take away that sense of success for me and would make me feel like I have nothing else in this shitty situation to strive for. My family is struggling to get the resources and food we need. Wi-Fi barely works. My three siblings and I are all home and we're cramped in our one bedroom apartment. My mom is working from home and my dad was laid off from his job as a retail clerk. We can't afford my caretaker anymore so my parents have to take on that role too. I feel at a loss during this pandemic, but the one thing motivating me is that I'm a good student and I wanna show that. Universal Pass sorry, Universal Pass will take everything away from me. I think this also shows that like, like I think Johanna had said before, it's not a dichotomy, it's not a monolith that Universal Pass would help the disadvantaged communities, the marginalized students that we have. There are a various like different amount of perspectives and inputs, which the input form has shown, um, showing that like there are students that we believe would, would um, be advantaged from universal pass that are saying that they want opt-in. So I just want council and the public to consider that. Thank you, Lalo. Yeah, um, I do appreciate like everyone like that has like shared their response or like shared their concerns and like members of the public that like have shared their responses. Um, I do want to like again echo what Robert and Kalechi said earlier on that like the folks that can't give their opinion are the ones that are like the folks most affected by like this and would I believe would benefit the most out of like uni- universal pass no record system are the ones that aren't able to fill out the form. Um, I don't think like. It's hard because, like, there are definitely, like, folks that, like, are very marginalized and, like, do, like, like Melinda said, like, believe, like, they've been from that. And it's, like, a way, like, for, like, better, it's, like, an escape for them to be able to, like, succeed and, like, have something, like, to look for, look towards um, in this, like, time of, like, heavy distress. Um, but I do think, like, there are folks that can't even have that, that don't even have that option to, like, try and look towards, like, succeeding in this because they're just in a place where they can't even place like put the time and effort into like trying to pass and trying to pass their classes or trying to get like a good letter grade and I do think that at the end of the day those are the voices that aren't being represented as much um I also just don't think like selecting like selecting select responses from the forum which I know like various folks have kind of done is a good way to go about this because there are like a multitude of responses that like were there and then there's also multiple responses that weren't there because at the end of the day there was around I believe 900 responses out of 32,000 undergraduate students. Yeah, thank you Lalo. Um, sorry, um, Naomi already went so we'll go to Mexica. 
Is Mahika here? Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hi, there you are. I sorry. was unmuting. Um, yeah, so basically, first of all, I really want to thank everyone who, like, got together and, like, drafted the letter and, like, had a discussion about it. Like, sorry, I was just unable to join, um, but for, like, a variety of reasons. But I have been, like, thinking a lot about it, and, like, I know I've talked a little bit in the group me, and I've just really been trying to, like, formulate an opinion here um, or just, like, some sort of side or the other or, like, multi or other option. And I feel one point that hasn't, I don't want to restate points that have, like, been dragged through the mud, like, a million times. Like, one thing that we haven't talked about yet is just, like, or as much, I guess, is sort of the impact that academics can have positively on like mental health and you know establishing a sense of normalcy like especially for students who are either like transfers or I don't know just like out, basically like not home like anyone who's like and most people have been incredibly displaced by this we already know that um just like this whole idea of losing extracurriculars like losing um, friends in a lot of cases, like social contact. Everything about the situation has turned pe turned people's lives upside down, um, mostly for worse, again, as we've discussed. Um, I would like if people thought a little bit more on this point of how not really having an option for like letter grading really does change the dynamic and the purpose of like your classes and like how you view them and like how you treat them and I really am trying to think from like as di as many diverse perspectives as possible um and I know that for a lot of people and I'm not going to use words like majority or like whatever but like it's definitely like for a lot a lot of undergraduates like having a quarter that isn't perhaps like as academic, and I don't know if anyone has like a solution to this or like an other option or like if there was a way to make that unmask process like a little less tedious. Um, I would like be far more for passing a record because I genuinely feel like people not having like the majority of students like not having things to do like not having things to work towards it's like it's it's not good for a lot of people's mental health. And I'm not, again, I really agree with like a lot of the points that have been made, like almost all on both sides. They're basically the same t side. We're still trying to advocate for like wellness and health and all of all of this stuff. But like, I just really think it's important to consider like the effects that like not having classes where like not having the option to sort of like, and I'm not, and I I know that GPA and like this whole idea that like you can numerically assign grades to like someone's progress and someone's worth is like in essence like really bad and really harmful. But like in this situation, like I don't like we're not gonna undo that entire line of reasoning, or like no one's gonna undo that entire line of reasoning just because like admin or whoever decides to like make it universal or like make opt-in not an option. I don't know, I'm just, that's one thing that's on my mind. That's one thing that's really factoring into this decision that I don't think has been brought up yet. There's obviously like a lot of counterbalances. There's a lot of like holes per se, because like I haven't articulated this incredibly well, but I do think it's important to bring up. And yeah, I'm. that's definitely something that worries me. Um, and again, I don't want it to like take away from anything that's been said on the basis of equity or on the basis of what's in the letter. I just think it's important to consider. Hey, Shahama, and thank you, Mahika. Um, yeah, hi. So um, I just, I want to like, again, I, I like Mahika said, I don't want to repeat what people have said, but I just want to talk about like, I personally over the past few days have like reached out to students um, mostly from my community, like mostly international students, but I've been trying my best to reach out. And um, I understand the equity standpoint. I'm just really struggling to understand um, the option of not having an opt-in 
um, because I think like for a lot of students that I have spoken to, um, a lot of the struggles that students are going through um, are unique and something they don't go through daily, but they're at least like academically, they would be able to see like some sense of like normal kind of routine kind of thing in their life like when everything else is upside down for a lot of students it is like I've spoken to students who who find it very very important to be able to see that kind of um normalcy in their lives and that kind of relief that at least like um academic wise they won't have to be stressed about like future jobs staying in the country grad school opportunities um and like a an only pass no record option kind of affecting those things which would like just burden them more not knowing how a universal pass or no record would like affect their any any possible future plans that they were having especially like a lot of juniors and seniors um and I just I think like I I understand and I I've definitely spoken to students who would also prefer class no record and I understand the equity perspective but I I'm struggling to understand why we cannot have an opt-in grade system yeah thank you Shahama um I think Brandon's next and then Orion and then Isabel thank you so I have one new idea that has also come to my attention that I think we should add to the proposal I think we should propose to extend the drop deadline until the end of the quarter um, because I think people's circumstances and this will help if we depending on which way we go either way would help mitigate uh, some of the equity concerns because it would give like people more flexibility uh, based on like what if if in fact throughout the quarter circumstances get worse they can react to that mo more proactively um, so I really think we need to add to the proposal a de drop deadline extension until the end of week 10, potentially even finals week. But I'm not sure how we would go about that. Yeah, thanks, Brandon. Okay, Orion. Orion. Can we come back to him? Yeah, we can come back to Orion then. Um, Isabel, or, yeah, yeah. Wait, did, oh, sorry, I think I was on mute. Uh, okay, Orion, yeah, you can go. And um, Isabel, also, you're probably going to break up, I'm assuming. Um, so I would maybe go ahead and type what you were going to say, too, because I, I know the connection's been a little messed up. Um, so, uh, I, I think I, I agree with what Brandon just said. Um, I think that that would be helpful. Um, also another thing is that, um, sorry if I use the word, um, screw people over. Uh, I know that we're not intending to harm anyone. It's just that, um, uh, with each of the proposals, there is, um, some costs associated with them. And we're going to have to balance these costs as best we can um, so that, uh, you know, to, to do the best we can for um, UCLA students. And um, if we are worried about, if we do care about the total numerics of students, and if we are worried about non-response bias, and the survey responses, we could, I don't know if this, there's legal issues uh, with this, but we could send out um, a specific request to um, a random sample of students using the UCLA directory and um, make sure that each of those students responds and that, you know, we might only have to do 30 students for statistical reasons. Um, and then that should give us a very representative sample of all students if we make sure that all of them do respond, given that they are chosen randomly. Um, as for at that rate, then we, I mean, we can probably expect the results that the uh, amount of students who are in favor of 
the universal um, uh, past no rest would be the numerical minority. Um, then we have to look at what is the um, weight of, uh, of the costs that they will take on versus the weight of the costs that um, uh, will be taken on by students uh, in the case of um, the opt-in system. And we know that more students will take on a cost during the opt-in system. We do not know how much at this point. If we do want to know how much, we'll have to do uh, some better surveying technique. Um, and, then, and then we have to weigh it. Um, and, and in weighing it, we, we can, you know, I, I like just, there, we have a dearth of knowledge here, but I would assume like just, just based on, you know, looking at like what the, like what I estimate to be the, the probable outcome, I would estimate that uh, without knowing um, where we're at right now, that um, the universal uh, system would be more detrimental to students than the ability to opt in. But then again, we can also, we're, we're not stuck to these two options. We can possibly take other routes um, which is why I was um, bringing up earlier the uh, possibility of universal um, academic renewal, whereby we make it easier for students to, um, if something comes up that negatively impacts them uh, because of this quarter, that they will be able to um, more effectively deal with it yet other students who still want to improve their GPA, it will still count for their GPA. Um, I, I don't know if you need me to explain that a little bit more, um, but no one, no one really got back to that. So I just wanted to bring that up into discussion again. Um, do, do you need me to explain, explain that a little more? Um, I think we're fine. Um, I think we, we definitely understood the first time, um, but I appreciate that. Um, okay. Isabel, do you want me to read yours out loud since your connection's messed up a little bit? Okay. Um, Isabel said, at the beginning, I really wanted there to be a pathway from unmasking and I didn't fully agree with universal pass no record. But what changed my mind was the fact that we do not know what the future holds. In terms of time to the first 100,000 cases, the US is nine days behind Italy. And we all can see where Italy is at. Major outbreaks haven't occurred in our communities yet, but they will. I don't mean it to be alarmist, but like legit, we are all going to know someone who gets sick and or our, we ourselves will be getting sick. I'd like to think it, me, my family fell ill, then I would be able to focus and get good grades, but I do not know that and no one knows that. Thank you, Isabel. Um, okay, uh, oh, neat. Um, I have a few points that I've like been writing down while we've been talking about this. Um, Orion, um, I definitely appreciate your like, concern about surveying an accurate portion of the body. I think like we all appreciate that. I think what I would say though is um, first is even if it was randomized and sent out, um, we don't know who actually fills out the forms. And I think there's a very strong case to be made that there would be a bias and a skewedness towards students who have the access and ability to fill out the form. 